Over the past few years, launch coasters have been popping up everywhere. Universal's Islands of Adventure's latest two roller coasters, Hagrid's Magic Creature Motorbike Adventure and Velocicoaster, both have launches. The brand new ride at Epcot, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, is also a launch coaster, as is the new Tron roller coaster at Magic Kingdom. This trend extends outside of the big theme park names too. SeaWorld Orlando and Busch Gardens Williamsburg both built quadruple launch coasters, Icebreaker and Pantheon, while Fantasyland built the world's first launched flying coaster, aptly named Fly. Launch coasters provide something that traditional rides, ones with chain lift hills, just can't. The initial punch of acceleration is simply more thrilling than a slow climb. As roller coasters have developed over time, so too have roller coaster launches. Today, theme parks have seemingly settled on magnetic launch coasters, rides which use high-powered magnets to propel guests to stupidly high speeds. All of the rides mentioned at the start of this video are magnetic launch coasters, as are many other rides around the world as well. Magnetic launch systems come in two types, linear induction motors LIMs, and linear synchronous motors LSMs. So how do they work? Linear induction motors known as LIMs were first introduced back in 1992, but they weren't used to launch roller coasters. Disneyland Paris and Vacoma used LIMs on their Big Thunder mounted roller coaster to transport trains from the end of the ride back into the station. These drives were entirely magnetic, meaning they didn't contact any part of the train, heavily reducing wear and tear. However, it wasn't long before another amusement company enhanced the technology. In 1996, the world's first LIM launch coasters opened to the public, Outer Limits Flight of Fear at both Kings Island and Kings Dominion. Developed by Premier Rides, the technology uses an alternating magnetic field to push the trains along the track at an ever-increasing speed. Flight of Fear was able to accelerate guests from 0 to 54 miles per hour, 87 kilometers per hour, in just 4 seconds. LIM launch coasters use pairs of electromagnets known as estata, which are placed on top of each other or beside each other nearby the ride's track. They feature a small gap in the middle, allowing for a metal fin on the train, often made from aluminium, to slide through. Due to the arrangement of the electromagnets, once they're powered, a traveling magnetic field is created which constantly moves along the track. This constantly moving magnetic field causes the aluminium fin on the train to create a magnetic field of its own, known as an eddy current. This magnetic field opposes the one created by the electromagnets, causing a force to be applied to the roller coaster train, as the two fields want to separate from each other. The force is exerted in the opposite direction to its relative motion. In this case, the relative direction of motion is backwards, as the magnetic field waves travel forwards faster than the train. As a result, the repulsion accelerates the train forwards to a speed desired by the designer. To maximize power and efficiency, as the train speeds up, so does the electromagnetic wave generated by the stators. However, LIM systems require an enormous amount of power to run and aren't extremely efficient. Some of the energy used is converted into heat, which is drawn away from the electromagnets using large fans. Nevertheless, LIM launch coasters have been used on numerous roller coasters, from the many impulse rides produced by Intamin to the Incredicoaster at Disney California Adventure Park. LIMs initially ushered in a new era for launch coasters, however, they were quickly followed by the debut of the linear synchronous motor known as LSMs. In 1997, amusement ride manufacturer Intamin debuted Superman Escape from Krypton at Six Flags Magic Mountain and Tower of Terror at Dreamworld, the world's first LSM launch coasters. Both rides were capable of accelerating guests from 0 to 100 miles per hour, 160 kilometers per hour in 7 seconds. The idea of this technology was similar to LAMs, but differed in a few key ways. LSM launch coasters use a series of electromagnets, known as a stator, which line the ride's track. These may appear as a single row of electromagnets, like on Velocicoaster, or two parallel lines, like on Icebreaker. Each train is equipped with a set of large, strong, permanent magnets, often located on the base of the ride's vehicle. The permanent magnet on the train allows for the electromagnets on the track to pass through the middle. To accelerate the train, the electromagnets match the magnetic field generated by the permanent magnet on the train. However, the magnetic field generated by the track is offset slightly, 
This causes the permanent magnet on the train to be both attracted and repelled forwards at the same time. Effectively, the train rides the electromagnetic field generated by the stator being accelerated forwards in the process. To successfully achieve this, LSMs require extremely precise control systems. The speed of the traveling magnetic field must be exactly synchronized with the speed of the train at all times for it to work properly. Therefore, as the train accelerates, so does the magnetic field generated by the electromagnets. The precise nature of the technology makes LSMs much more efficient than LIMs, requiring less power to run, therefore reducing operating costs. Furthermore, the process used to launch the train can also be used in reverse to slow the trains down. Velocicoaster at Universal's Islands of Adventure features two LSM launches, whilst Red Force at Ferrari Land in Spain uses LSMs to accelerate guests from 0 to 180 km per hour, 112 miles per hour in just 5 seconds. Magnetic launches aren't the only type of launch systems available to roller coaster designers, however. Accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm in the US features a hydraulic launch, whilst Dododompa at Fujiku Highland in Japan features a compressed air launch. Despite these alternative systems, it was the magnetic launch that caught on, specifically linear synchronous motors LSMs. By featuring no moving parts, magnetic launch systems are free from wear and don't need to be reset between launches. This makes it the ideal launch system for larger theme parks, like the ones at Disney and Universal, who accelerate train after train without hassle. Though, roller coasters with launches often suffer from downtime more than their traditional lift hill counterparts. Fortunately, as time went on, manufacturers of roller coasters made their magnetic launches more reliable. They also became more powerful, more efficient, and much more flexible. Today, roller coasters often feature more unique magnetic launches. Some use swing launches, where the train cycles forwards and backwards through the launch before gaining enough speed to complete the rest of the layout. Others feature LSM launches placed on airtime hill elements, pushing guests out of their seat as they're accelerated to a high top speed. Some combine both, using fast switch tracks to allow riders to partially climb a hill before rolling back through the launch, climbing a spike, and completing the remainder of the track. It's for all of these reasons that Disney and Universal have been constructing magnetic launch coasters and will likely construct even more in the future. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time.